At the beginning of the movie, you can see how crimes in America was increasing day by day. As a result of these crimes, the number of people in prison has increased. As a result of the problem, the government has launched a campaign to promote private prisons. Similarly, many private jails were built in America as a result of the rising crime rate, the number of convicts grew in lockstep with the crime rate. Prisoners were sent to private jails in this manner. One such facility was Terminal Island, where an illegal race was staged. The race featured dangerous modified cars that were loaded with weapons and driven by inmates from the jail. This race consists of five rounds, with the prisoner who wins all five rounds being released. They make a lot of money doing this, they broadcast it live, and the crowd enjoys it immensely. The plot begins with the prison of Terminal Island. The race is shown in its last round, with a man dubbed Frankenstein winning. There was a mask over Frankenstein's face, and when Frankenstein was ready to win the race, it was revealed that Frankenstein's weaponry had been disabled. Another man appears in the other car, he was the second place finisher in this race, and he collides with Frankenstein's car. In Frankenstein's car, there was also a girl named Case who was his partner. When Frankenstein begs Case to leave the car, she does so, and Frankenstein's car explodes. The scene transitions to show a man called Jensen working in a construction company outside of the jail. Everything was going swimmingly until the police officers arrived, claiming that the construction project was illegal. However, because the people are forced to undertake this task due to unemployment, the cops begin to beat everyone. There was a fierce struggle between the company's employees and the police, and they eventually fled. Jensen also visits his home, and a picture of Jensen's happy family is shown. This is how time passes, and it includes his wife and younger daughter. Jensen's residence is visited by a masked man who is about to kill Jensen's wife. Jensen arrives to save his wife, but he also causes him to pass out. Jensen regains consciousness after some time, but his wife has died. When the cops arrive, they believe Jensen has divorced his wife. They apprehend Jensen, imprison him, and transport him to the Terminal Island Jail. Time passed, but there were still some people who didn't like Jensen, and they were making plans to put a stop to him. They ambush Jensen while he is eating. When the cops arrive, they separate them. When the warden of the jail learns of this, she summons Jensen to her cabin. She tells Jensen that you don't know who you've killed, they're dangerous and could kill you at any time. During this time, the warden sees Jensen's file. Jensen is a good driver, and he's also a capable racer, as she discovers. The warden now informs Jensen about the race. She claims the prisoner who wins the race will be released, and she also tells Jensen about Frankenstein. That his face had been burned, that he used to drive while wearing a mask, and that no one has seen his face since today. However, his race is quite popular among the public. Now that he is dead, I want you to compete in this race as Frankenstein. Jensen, on the other hand, rejects. The warden warns him that if he stays in this jail, they will taunt him, but that if he wins the race, he would be released. When Jensen hears this, he nods yes, and the warden says the coach will provide the remainder of the information. She delivers him to the coach, who informs Jensen about the race. Anyone can murder anyone else in this race. This race lasts three days, and the competitors have a variety of weaponry. You must also keep an eye on your car's speed, if you survive until the third day, you will win the race. After all of this, Jensen returns to jail and notices a few people. He discovers the tracking gadget on those people's hands and inquires of the coach as to why they have one on their hands. Jensen suddenly recalls that the man who murdered his wife was also wearing a tracking device. The setting changes to a race day. The Frankenstein mask is given to Jensen by the warden. They were all told to get in their cars. Meanwhile, a car comes, bringing with it a slew of young ladies. They were also detainees and race participants. The girl Case is shown, and she was Frankenstein's partner. When Case hears the voice in Jensen's car, she realizes he is not Frankenstein. The race begins, and it is broadcast worldwide. The TRP is high, as it has been in the past. Jensen drives the car in a perilous manner, and the crowd thinks of him as Frankenstein. Similarly, Jensen's car was placed at number one. When the other prisoner notices this, they hit his car. Case claims that if your car's speed is this, 
we'll receive a lot of weaponry in the future. We'll also receive the gasoline, and between races, several perilous tracks will be presented. If a car is parked in front of curtain rails, both the car and the driver will be terminated. The other car driver fires indiscriminately at Jensen, and Jensen returns the fire while evading the bullets. He notices the man who assaulted him while incarcerated. The man makes another gesture to end Jensen's conversation. Jensen recalls his wife's death as he sees his gesture. Jensen believes the man who killed his wife made a similar gesture, so he tries to kill him. But he couldn't, and the race stopped. After parking his car in the garage, he pursues the man. A heavy battle ensued between them, and just as Jensen was about to put the man down, a police officer intervened and caused him to pass out. The real story was revealed here, the police officer had asked the man to kill Jensen's wife. He's done this to apprehend Jensen, bring him into this cell, and put Frankenstein in his place. The race begins the following day, and Jensen drives carefully, asking Case what she knows about the warden. Case informs him. Warden is smart and understands how to manipulate others, so she asked me to disable Frankenstein's weaponry. She'll let me out of here after that. Frankenstein is supposed to lose this race, according to the warden. She doesn't want to release Frankenstein because she wants to retain the game's popularity. That's why she put an end to Frankenstein. Hearing this, Jensen became enraged and drove his car at a fast speed, firing at the man. Jensen, the murderer of his wife, devises a fresh strategy and smokes in front of that man's car. The man's car tilts, and as he emerges, Jensen kills him, breaking the game's regulation. No prisoner is permitted to leave his car during the race, so in the meantime, the warden deploys a dangerous truck. While driving there, the truck opened fire on the cars, putting the cars in threat. Jensen was backed up by another prisoner. They move to the risky track with the cars after Jensen declares, we have to compete with this truck jointly. As their cars move away from the track, some rods appear, and the truck collapses as a result of those rods, fully destroying it. They were ecstatic because they had prevented massive devastation, and the race on the second day was also completed. After the race, a Jensen supporter approaches him, but the man believes Jensen is Frankenstein, which is why he approached him. After hearing Jensen's voice, he realizes Frankenstein has died. Later, the warden is seen, who is enraged. She has suffered a huge loss as a result of her many days working in the truck. Jensen has demolished it in under a minute, and the warden is now terrified. The warden informs the police officer that he must put an end to Jensen's case as soon as possible. The police officer agrees with the warden and places the bomb under Jensen's car. Now that the third day's race has begun, the warden approaches Jensen and says, I have prepared your documents. You only have to win this race. Case approaches him and tells him everything about the warden, including how the warden warned her not to let Jensen win. The race begins, and Jensen accelerates his car at a high rate, despite the fact that he has neither fuel nor weaponry. The other prisoner takes everything, fires at Jensen's car, the other prisoner pursues him, and Jensen speeds away. He throws a rocket launcher out of his car, but it lands on the wall instead of his car. There was smoke everywhere, and as the haze dissipated, they noticed that the cars had vanished. The warden was concerned when they discovered the cars were leaving the jail, and it was determined that they had planned this earlier. The warden recalls that she fixed a bomb in Jensen's car and that they will burst the wall and flee from here. The coach, on the other hand, has the bomb and has disarmed it. They were now fleeing from the police officers, who attempted to stop them by firing at them, but they continued on their way. Meanwhile, the warden dispatches two helicopters behind them, which open fire on them. Jensen and his friend become separated, Jensen exits his vehicle, and Case drives his vehicle onward. She pulls over to the side of the road and emerges wearing Frankenstein's mask. The cops apprehend her, believing he is Frankenstein. On the other hand, the warden and the police officer appear to be pleased, as if they have apprehended Jensen. People were showering them with gifts, and there was a gift in front of the warden. She receives the bomb she fixed in Jensen's car as she opens the gift. The warden and the police officer are killed by the explosives. Meanwhile, the coach is displayed because he is the one who planted the device. On the opposite side, Jensen and his buddy board a train while rushing, 
Jensen says, I have to go to my daughter first, adding, I will come to you as soon as I find my daughter. As time passes, a garage is shown, where Jensen was working with his companion in their garage. A car arrives and Case is shown getting out of the car, because Case was also released from jail, Jensen meets her with his daughter. The movie ends here. Thank you for watching. At the beginning of the cinema, a young Michael is seen visiting an old house with his parents. Michael's mother was expecting a kid, and Michael's parents were pleased with the prospect of their child's coming. As a result,